Hi, Tim Ottman here again. Part two of the, the question that often gets asked to me is how do I breathe when I'm exercising if I want to breathe more efficiently and get more out of my exercise via breathing? The first part we talked about was learning to use your nose as much as possible. In and out through the nose all the time is actually far more efficient than in and out through the mouth or in through the nose, out through the mouth. So we talked about that and how we basically, over time, we can train our brain to get used to more carbon dioxide, which will then, once it gets more and more used to carbon dioxide, kind of like a, a free diver trains their brain or trains their body to handle being underwater for longer and what that, that discomfort they're experiencing is elevated carbon dioxide. You can train your body to get used to it and you can learn to breathe at lower breathing rates which will then mean you'll have lower heart rate for the same exertion and it'll make you much 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 more efficient at delivering oxygen to the cells for energy production the second side of it involves the use of the diaphragm so we're going to breathe in and out through our nose but it's even if i am having to breathe in and out through my mouth or breathing in through my nose out through my mouth um, the mo one of the really really important things is learning how to breathe efficiently and our diaphragm is what we call the primary breathing muscle. So when we're not exercising, when we're at rest, we should use the diaphragm only, no shoulder movement whatsoever. Now, shoulders are what we call the secondary muscles for inhalation, so they're used in emergencies. So exercise is a cardiovascular emergency. We are doing more work, so we need to produce more energy to be able to do the more work. So it's, it's what we call a cardiovascular emergency and we, therefore we produce more carbon dioxide and we have to get rid of that and what have you. So well, often when people exercise, they, we're bringing in our emergency muscles, our chest and shoulders, but we don't use our diaphragm. And in fact, most people don't use their diaphragm at all at rest, even though it's the primary breathing muscle. So we're actually, most people breathe in emergency mode at rest rather than learning how to use their diaphragm. For, t for now, we're gonna talk about how to breathe though when we're exercising and it's actually far more efficient to learn how to use your diaphragm and your chest and shoulders. So rather than just <sighs> sucking it in using our chest and shoulders, it's actually far more efficient and I'll stand here, you won't see my head, which is, some may say is a good thing, but you'll actually see that this it's actually far more efficient to start at my belly, then use my chest. So we go in here first, then into here. And at high levels of exercise, that's far, far more efficient because firstly, by using your diaphragm, you're gonna use more of your lung volume for gas exchange. So by using my diaphragm, I'm actually using the bottom part of my lungs. Whereas if I use my chest and shoulders only, I'm often only using the top and middle parts of my lungs. So we're gonna use far more of our lungs for gas exchange, which is important for getting oxygen in to produce energy. Secondly, um, it, it's really important because it allows me to have a slower breathing rate at the same exertion. It does take time to learn how to do it as it does learning to breathe in and out through your nose. Most people have a weak diaphragm because we don't use it very much. So learning how to use your diaphragm when you're exercising um, takes time. And there are some fantastic exercises you can learn um, either you know, in water or out of the water to strengthen your diaphragm, some certain breathing techniques and what have you. And um, I can, you know, if, if you're interested in taking this further, I, we, I can teach you either via Skype or in person in clinic. Um, and, and, you know, so you basically, you learn how to strengthen your diaphragm and that will make you far, far more efficient. The other cool thing about learning to use your diaphragm is, well, there's a couple things. First, secondly, your diaphragm is really, very, very much involved in posture and, and, and helping you stabilize and keeping an upright posture. Because if I'm slumped over like this with shoulders bent and back bent, it's almost impossible to use my diaphragm. So to learn how to use my diaphragm, I've got to learn to sit up straight. Or if I'm on a bike, I've got to learn to keep my back relatively straight. So not only is it making me more efficient, it's actually helping me um, increase, make my, allowing my posture to be more straight. And therefore, you know, I function better. And the diaphragm will, um, if you 
if you imagine the, um, the core or, or your abdominal cavity as a, a cylinder, the pelvis being the floor and the abdominal walls being the sides, then the diaphragm acts is like a, a ceiling to the cylinder. And it's much easier for me to engage my core and strengthen my core if I'm using my diaphragm. And my diaphragm is quite vital and strong and active. The other thing is, is that of all the functions that are automatic in our body, breathing is the one function that we can consciously control. And the, as I mentioned before, the diaphragm is the primary breathing muscle. So if you learn to use your diaphragm efficiently and, and the way it should be, you can actually learn the same nervous system that regulates my automatic functions is also the same system that nerve, regulates my stress response. And by learning to use my diaphragm and regulating my breathing when I exercise, I can actually help to induce what we call parasympathetic nervous system dominance or we can actually increase the parasympathetic phase. So the sympathetic phase is that fight or flight. When we're exercising, we need to have a level of arousal, but often we're too arousal, we can be too tense and tight. If I learn to use my diaphragm, I can actually allow my body to be more parasympathetic as well. And that, that allows me to access what we would call great states of relaxation, or what we, what we might even call it, um, there's also a thing called alpha brainwave functioning, which you might call Every now and then when you're exercising, you might be super relaxed and really focused, what we some people call a zone site type state, where well, you can access this zone state or you're more likely to access this zone state when you learn to use your diaphragm and when you learn to breathe with your diaphragm and allow yourself to be more relaxed. So there are multiple benefits from breathing efficiently, using your nose, using your diaphragm for sport and for performance. If you're interested in taking it further, contact me via tim at timaltman.com.au and uh, we can have a chat, um, as, as I said, either in person, in clinic or in a sporting setting. I sometimes work with groups, more often one-on-one, -on -one, or we can work via Skype if you don't live where I live. Um, also, jump on my YouTube channel, which is Tim Altman, and you can see some of the other videos I've made about breathing and other aspects of health and or paddling, if you're interested in that. Thanks.